This is based on overall survival. Whether solo or with a pack, on land, sea, or air, this is the top 10 dinos of 2023. At number 10, we have Sukumimus. Sukumimus was a pretty forgotten playable for most of the time that it's been out, but with the buffs that it's received this year, Sukumimus is a lot more of a contender. Sukumimus is the fastest semi-aquatic on land after Megalania, and it has both the power, health, and damage to deal with any mid to small tier dinos it may come across. That's not to say that it can't fight any apex dinosaurs. Sukumimus definitely has both the speed, maneuverability, and range to put the herd on many apexes and even kill them if you catch it by surprise. But even if it doesn't kill you, Sukumimus will definitely leave you hurting for more. Swimming with Sukumimus definitely used to be a pain, but now that they've buffed its swim speed and turn radius, Sukumimus can at least keep up with the other semi-aquatics and use the water as a viable escape, even if they tend to be a bit faster. At number 9, we have Amargosaurus. Amargosaurus is definitely one of the herbivores that came out that you looked at and knew immediately that that was a snack. Everyone and their mom wanted a piece of Amargosaurus to the point where they definitely needed several buffs to become viable. Because of that, Amargosaurus today is definitely a powerhouse and can mess up pretty much every mid to lower tier dino and put a bit of a hurt on any apexes. That being said, it still can be pretty much run down and overpowered by more powerful dinosaurs such as T-Rex, and it does not have enough speed to get away. Amargosaurus attacks have pretty amazing range. There's pretty much no way you can attack this guy without taking some damage, especially because of the reflect bleed that you get from the spines. If you play smart and remain vigilant, there's pretty much no way you'll die as this massive tank. At number 8 we have Dinochirus, the duck-billed dinosaur. It's pretty hard to starve with Dinochirus as they have a lot of diet options. From fish, shellfish, and berries, you're never really going to die unless you're in a fight. Dinochirus has always been strong with both its claw attack and tail attack doing lots of damage. It was also fast enough to run down a lot of mid-tier dinosaurs, as well as fast enough to get away from apexes. It really has just received a lot of nerfs with getting longer cooldowns between attacks and a little bit slower land speed. This has made fighting a Dinochirus a lot more predictable and gives other dinosaurs more chances to land hits. Still, Dinochirus is able to mess up pretty much anything it comes across at every stage of its life, from the baby to the adult. The lack of options between cooldowns and their slow land speed is why Dinochirus is lower on this list. At number 7, we have Eotriceratops. This massive herbivore is very versatile and easy to use. For a creature of its size, it has a lot of speed and mobility. It also has a lot of health and damage, which makes sense when you look at the horns on its head. Eotrike has some of the most favorable matchups when solo, with both the speed, power, and health to fight anything in a head-on battle. It can even boost its damage further with its sharpened horns ability, which can make one head swing hurt even more. Eelchike does have many weaknesses, one of them being its very slow swim speed in the water. It has the health usually to outlast hits and get across, but it also has a very large hitbox from behind. Creatures that are faster can really exploit that weakness, especially with the lack of a kick or any kind of back forward facing attack besides the really weak tail slap and will allow you to get a few cheeky shots in. But should Eotrike be losing a fight with any larger creature, they have a lot of abilities such as their charge that allow them to get away at a fast pace and live to see another day. Eotrikes and groups are a force of nature and you never want to get too close because they might see you as a threat and run you down. That being said, they can still be outpowered by other apex dinosaurs and bone break will keep them from getting away. Some good teamwork will always bring one down. At number 6 we have Spinosaurus. 
This guy was the dominant predator in Path of Titans meta for such a long time that it may be a surprise to some of you to see it so low on the list here. However, since the release of Tyrannosaurus Rex and a series of nerfs and buffs and as well as overall changes, Spinosaurus has no longer been the top predator it used to be. On one hand, Spinosaurus's water mobility has been greatly improved. They are much faster and have a much better turning radius than they used to, which allows them to fight other semi-aquatics or even fully aquatics in the water. On the other hand, Spinosaurus has lost its bleed for its claw attack and also lost its charged bite, which was a big reason why it was so dominant in the meta for so long. Even so, all of its attacks have really good range from the tallest to the smallest dinosaur and none of you are going to get out unscathed. The sail on its back is a really big hitbox that many people take advantage of, especially smaller creatures that like to jump, but the stomp ability and Spinosaurus's massive health pool and damage make it very dangerous dangerous to get too close. All in all, Spinosaurus might not be king anymore, but he's definitely no pushover. At number 5, we have Onodontosaurus. This guy is definitely the tankiest tank and was nearly impossible to kill upon release. Since then, it has definitely become more balanced with a nerf to its hunker ability and a buff to its overall walking around toughness. Anodonto's main play style is to sit down and kind of wait it out, but that's not the only thing that it's good at. The claw on its tail is great for breaking ankles and not only allows your pack mates to help defend you from someone who's attacking you, but also allows you to get rid of pests in a quick and easy fashion. Some might say that you can also use the bone break to get away from creatures, but Anodonto's running speed is so slow and the bone break doesn't last long enough for you to really use it as a successful escape option. In that case, it's best to just kill your attacker the best that you can instead of trying to run away. The tail slam hunker combo is strong enough to deal with many other apex dinosaurs, especially Eotriceratops and T-Rex so you have nothing to worry about in solo encounters. However, teams of apex dinosaurs can simply stand out of range and bait your attacks so they can slowly whittle you down and kill At you. At number 4 we have Sarcosuchus. 2023 has really been the year for Sarcosuchus where they've received a ton of buffs and basically zero nerfs. It started off with the lunge to surprise prey from the water's edge, then they got a charge bite which basically one shots most things, then they got a dash to run people down on land, increased swim speed and damage, a bite that takes away oxygen, and clamp to drag people into the water and drown them. Because of this, Sarko is an extreme threat by itself, but get more than one and you will have no chance of living. Sarko can even drag dinosaurs as big as Anodonto into the water to be mercilessly dogpiled by its pack mates. The only one its watery death playstyle doesn't work on are other semi-aquatics or even the fully aquatic. Sarko Stugas can definitely out damage many other apex dinosaurs at the lower end of this list, but they really don't stand much of a chance chance on land. The water is their escape and if you can prevent them from getting back to it, they're pretty much dead. Sarko's varied diet means they don't have to hunt land dinosaurs, they can eat plenty of AI seafood or they can eat shellfish. So as long as the water quality is good, you will never starve. At number 3 we have Tyrannosaurus Rex, the king himself. T-Rex was originally not planned to be a part of the roster but after a custom job was then added to the game. And like most games, T-Rex just absolutely had to be OP. I've constantly seen T-Rex get buffs in every patch and it's very obvious that they wanted it to replace Spinosaurus as the dominant predator. Although not super fast, Tyrannosaurus Rex does have the leg length to walk down pretty much anything and it has the stamina to run for quite a distance. Even so, T-Rex's true strength lies in its powerful jaw muscles where it does basically the most base damage with any bite and it can deliver a bone break which will keep you from getting away. A T-Rex would have to make a lot of mistakes in order to not kill you, especially since its abilities will help it win any face tank situation. Its tail slap does a lot of damage and its stomp will take away 90% of the health of anything that is not an apex. While one Rex is a king, two Rexes is a surefire death sentence. While they are definitely not unkillable, any dreams of fighting them one on one should be flushed down the drain. 
strength. You have a much better chance of fighting them with a pack as long as you fight unpredictably. That being said, our number two spot goes to Latina Venetrix. Raptors have been annoying for a majority of their existence, but with their recent pounce update, they've actually become a threat. Before, I never would have said Latina Venetrix would be able to 1v1 anything other than Struthi and Camp. But now you don't even really need to be good to 1v1 every dino you come across. While Pounce itself doesn't do any damage, you can pounce on it any dino from any angle and it'll automatically attach you to its side. Pouncing lasts as long as the raptor's stamina lasts, but even with bucking it's a little too long. The raptor strike's ability does increasing damage with each bite as well as added bleed. These two elements combined make raptors extremely difficult to get rid of, especially if they ambush you. Latin for one is definitely one of the smaller dinosaurs on the Path of Titans roster and that makes it easy to hide and ambush others. Latin however is actually not that fast and can actually be run down by a couple of dinos. This can be avoided when in a group as the threat of being pounced by multiple Latins is enough to distract them from chasing you. Latin's long tail makes it especially vulnerable as even if you're faster than another dino, if they can get enough tail bites on you they can whittle down your health and kill you from just that. Hiding in bushes and grass or running into small caves is a great way of escaping people who are stronger or faster than you. Even so, survival as a Latin is fairly straightforward and easy as long as you pick your battles carefully and use your size to your advantage. And at number one, we have Dana Nikus. All the weaknesses that Latin of Venetrix has do not exist in Dana Nikus. Dana Nikus is faster, smaller, and does just as much damage as its Latin of Venetrix cousin. Danon has great turning radius and a massive jump height. It also has massive fall resistance. This lets you fight creatures in hard to reach areas without taking much damage, as well as to loot people for escapes. Danon can pretty much solo any dinosaur it wants to just because it's so hard to fight and a group of Danons can kill you in under a minute. If you like team tactics or to jump other creatures, Danon is the perfect dinosaur for you. And as far as I can tell, there are no plans to nerf it anytime soon. Danon's two weaknesses are slow swim speed in the water and low health. So if you want to stop this raptor, your best bet is to jump into a body of water or ambush it with a charged attack. So what do you think? Do you agree with my list? Let me know down in the comments. Also, thank you so much for subscribing and I will see you in the next video.